so we'll discuss about the cmos inverter dc characteristics now okay so basically for the cmos inverter dc characteristics we have considered one simple inverter okay so the inverter part is already done and uh, i hope that all of you know uh, how a simple inverter looks like it is just a representation of a not gate in a logical representation but in case of cmos implementation we use a simple inverter to convert from logic 0 to logic 1 or from logic 1 to logic 0 so this is simple inverter uh, all all of you might be knowing it so what i've done is i've considered the simple inverter here with vdd and ground one pmos transistor and one nmos transistor uh, we know that how the inverter inverter is constructed one pmos and nmos would be connected in series and the, both the gate terminals are get shorted and from with that one we have taken we have we should be taking one common input as v in and the, the, both the drain terminals are shorted and we should be taking one common output as v out so already i have told you the body effect okay in the previous video so in the previous video uh, about the body effect what i have told you for in case of pmos transistor the body terminal would be given to the source terminal that is uh, it is fetched back to the vdd in order to implement the logic high part and we, uh, whereas in case of nmos transistor the body terminal is given towards the uh, source terminal again but it, this time it is given to the ground part okay so that's why those two nmos and pmos transistors are uh, inverted to each other so in case of NMOS operation, with respect to the inverter, we have three regions of operation. Basically, we have discussed this in the previous video. That is cutoff, linear as well as saturation, right? So, in case of cutoff, the VGS is less than VT. In case of linear, we have VGS greater than VT and VDS, VDS less than VGS minus VT. This is for NMOS, okay? So similarly, reverse to that of and MOS it is for PMOS that is uh, for PMOS in the cutoff again this is uh, VGSN is uh, uh, greater than VTN for linear it is VGSN is greater than VTN and VDSN is uh, VDSP okay this N represents for NMOS so in case if you want to represent in case of PMOS you should be writing P okay yeah so cutoff linear saturated it's uh, inverse so with these relations we would be getting one common term that is here VGSN is equal to V in okay and VDSN is equal to V out. VGS that is gate to source. If you see the gate to source connection, that would be equal to V in because this is VGS voltage. And if you see the body terminal representation, since it is fetched back to VDD, so we would be getting one simple loop here. So that's why you would be getting VGSN equal to V in. And VDSN again, this is uh, VDSN again, it is fetched back to the V out. Okay. So in case of PMOS operation, VGSP is equal to V in minus VDD and VDSP is equal to V out minus VDD where VTP is less than zero. So now let us get to the IV characteristic plot. So in case of a VI characteristic plot of, a, of an inverter, for, for that first we should be knowing the characteristic plots of NMOS as well as PMOS. Okay. So I have drawn one uh, four quadrant uh, graph here. So this is first quadrant and this is third quadrant. The first quadrant represents of NMOS device. Okay. And the second quadrant represents of PMOS device. Okay. So these are the respective characteristic plots of NMOS transistors as well as PMOS transistors. In one single quadrant I have uh, explained it. Okay. So see here. This is for NMOS where uh, the VGSN voltage would be uh, slightly increasing and it would be uh, tending towards constant okay in, in, in different different cases in case of NMOS whereas in case of PMOS it is just opposite to that of NMOS as I have already told you so that's why the positive values would be tending towards negative okay so see here this is one plot this is second plot third plot fourth plot and so on okay so this would be one complete IV characteristic plot, plot of an inverter okay so now here what i've done is this part is there this negative part this negative part i've shifted towards the second quadrant to make the values as positive why i'm going to tell you that what i've done is this vgsp part i've taken the modulus so id comma modulus of vgsp when we take the modulus part the or we know that if we take the modulus part the negative sign should be converting towards the positive so that's why this would be completely positive so this whole plot we shifted this side so that's why we would be getting one new plot like this okay 
Now consider magnitude of I D S P. Now what I am doing is this side the plot is there, right? The sign change are minus plus. So in case of uh, second quadrant, so I am shifting this complete plot towards the in one single quadrant only. That is in the first quadrant. So that what I am doing, consider the magnitude of I D S P. Okay, so that now what would be happening? The current, uh, the current here it was. The voltage was positive, but the current here was minus I D S P. Okay, the current was minus I D S P. So that I made it to uh, modulus of I D S P. That is plus I D S P. So that's why this plot would be shifted to this side. So uh, with this, why we have done this because we have to do the load line analysis. Okay, in order to get the load line analysis plot, we should be drawing this. How the load line analysis is done? We should be checking for all the point of intersections. Okay. Like this, you check for all point of uh, points of intersections. I am not drawing it accurately, but if you draw the all the points of intersections, we would be getting one plot like this. Okay, point of intersection plot. Okay, since so uh, in already in the BJT characteristic plot also we have seen the point of intersections are called as Q point. So in this case also, uh, using those point of intersections, you should be drawing the plot. Okay, that is IDD versus VDS plot. This is for load line analysis. But if we want the DC transfer curve, okay, so this is the plot of DC transfer curve, okay. So this is very very important plot, okay. You could be seeing the see the seeing the drastic changes in these plots, okay. So if you, with respect to this plot, we have five regions of operation. That is operating regions. That is region A, B, C, D, and E. In these five regions, region A and E are inverse to each other, inversely opposite to each other. Region B and D are inversely opposite to each other, and region C is constant. Okay, so now let us see the uh, uh, basic relation between these five regions. Okay, you see here from B D to A, it is a constant, but from A to B, we have a slight change. From B to C, we have a drastic change. Again, from C to D, if uh, the change is same as that of B to C, but it is inverse. Okay. And from D to E, it is same as the change from A to B, and after E, it is again constant. Okay, so this is the simple DC transfer curve of an inverter. Okay, you know the characteristics of inverter, right? They are uh, inversely proportional to each other. See all the regions of operation that is from A to B and D to E, they are inversely opposite to each other. B to C and C to D are inversely opposite, and B D D to A. And E to V in that is a constant plot are inversely opposite, or you could say that they are straight lines. Okay, so this was the DC transfer curve plot. So hope, hope it is clear. Now let us get to the operating regions. Operating regions. Where in case of an inverter, so we have five operating regions: region A, B, C, D, E. So what you need to be remembering is. In uh, do a separate table here for N MOS as well as P MOS. So in these five regions of operation, we have region A, B, C, D, E. But in case of region A, the N MOS transistor would be in cutoff region, and the P MOS transistor would be in the linear region. Okay, the N MOS would be in cutoff in case of region A, and in case of region E, as I've told you, A and E are inversely opposite to each other. So that's why P MOS transistor would be in cutoff region. Okay. N MOS would be in cutoff for region A, P MOS would be in cutoff for region B, and N P MOS would be linear in case of region A, and N MOS would be linear in case of region E. So why this cutoff word has come here? Because you see here in region B, C, and D, we don't have any word called as cutoff. So cutoff means what? The voltage would be nullified. Okay, that would be zero. If you see the plot also here, these two plots. If you compare this and this plot. Okay, you could see one uh, common thing that is we have a constant voltage. We don't have any drastic change in the voltage, so that's why you could be saying that there is no voltage change. Okay, so if there is no voltage change, you could be, it's obvious that it is zero, right? So that's why we are getting N MOS as cut off and P MOS in linear region. Why P MOS is in linear region? Because we know that for uh, regions of in e, regions of operation, when P MOS transistor is in linear region, we have one relation that is. VGS is less than VT, right? So here VGS voltage, that is gate to source voltage, is less than threshold voltage. So that's why, if you compare it with this plot, you see here we have the plots that is V in V in one and V in two. So we have already obtained one relation for VGS uh, with respect to 
PMOS transistor that is VGSP is equal to V in minus VDD. Okay. So it since it is V in minus VDD VGSP and we have the relation that is VGS is less than VT. So that's why you would be getting the PMOS in linear region. Okay. Whereas in case of E, I've already told you it is opposite. Now let's get to region B and D. Again, they are inversely opposite to each other. But here in case of region B, we have NMOS transistor in saturation region and PMOS transistor in linear region. Whereas in region D, we have NMOS in linear region and PMOS in saturation region. Okay. So why the NMOS, re NMOS in region D would be in saturation region? You see here. Again, for saturation region, the condition is for NMOS, okay, for NMOS it is, for NMOS it is, VGS is less than VT, okay, so also so you have a relation here which I have already told you, that is VGSN, so for in region C, in region C, both the regions that is uh, NMOS and PMOS would be saturated, okay, would be in saturation region only in case of region C, okay. So this was the uh, differences between the operating regions and the complete CMOS inverter DC characteristics. Okay. So that's all guys. So in the upcoming video, if possible, I'm going to uh, go in depth with each region and we have some uh, set of equations to be uh, uh, observed in the all the five regions. Okay. So regions of operation with that you would be getting to one conclusion with this plot. Okay. So that's all for this video guys. I hope you understood something from this video. Okay. Uh, like, share, subscribe to our channel. Please support us guys. Your support means a lot to us. We are going to upload the videos regularly for VLSI design and testing. Also embedded systems, digital image processing and if possible data structures uh, and other subjects. Okay. So for six and subjects regularly we are going to upload the video. Stay tuned. Watch till the end guys. Okay. So please. Uh, Support us guys, comment down your precious opinions about how you understood these kind of videos and all. Okay, thank you guys.